Today I'm sharing with you two pull-on jeans that are super easy to sew and easy to fit. They have been the unicorn type jean for me, the one that magically needs minimal adjustments to fit and I'm very excited to share them with you today. Stretch denim, comfy feel like wearing leggings, lighter blue, darker blue, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. These couple of days I've been sharing with you the finale week, uh, review week as such of the Let's Sew Easy Pants mini series and that series concluded last night with the last video. It just so happens to be that I was making pants this week and my favorite pull-on jean pattern was also re-released this week. So it sort of fit into the theme of making pants this week. Although I am not including this video as part of the Let's Sew Easy Pants series because it doesn't really fit the criteria of the type of pant I was showing in that series, which was a woven pant that was elasticated waist, that was pull-on. It's just a different style of pant, different way to measure yourself and to fit those types of pants than the stretch denim pull-on jean I'm going to share with you today. But it is also a very easy pant to sew, easier than doing like a full-on jean with a fly zipper and all those things. Fits into pant week, although it's not part of the Let's Sew Easy Pants mini series. Just this past Monday, Each to Stitch re-released one of the most popular patterns the Mountain View pull-on jeans. This is a pattern that was released in 2018. I did make a pair in that opportunity. It is a very important milestone. Now in the past, all their patterns came from sizes double zero to 20. And with this pattern, it's a new era because now they will include also from sizes 22 to 40. So basically each pattern that is released from now onwards will come from sizes double zero to 40. And that is a very, very good size range. I would say the best size range I have ever seen in any indie pattern company. And I am very, very proud to be an affiliate, <laughs> to be a pattern tester because just great things are coming. And that means that the quality of these patterns can also work for more people. So I'm very, very excited about that. I know I have several friends that have been waiting for the sizes to improve with this brand and I'm very excited for them. I've also had the comments of many of you telling me, oh, I wish they had more sizes. Well, from now on, you know, when you see new pattern releases, they will have sizes 0, 0 to 40 and you don't need to purchase these sizes separately. You know, you purchase the pattern and you will get every single size there in the files. Because this pattern has been re-released to include the new sizing, it means it is 20% off for a week. It was released on Monday, so it is 20% off through Sunday the 9th. So all the way through Sunday night, midnight sort of thing. You can get it for a bit less if you want to try it. Um, you're welcome to use my affiliate link if you want to as well and that helps support me at no extra cost to you. The Mountain View pull-on jeans were a pair of jeans I made in 2018. I was very excited about them, um, super excited. I mean, the features are just amazing. They look like a regular pair of jeans, but without the fuss. They have a super wide waistband that is contoured, very shaped, very anatomical. So it follows the shape of the waist and the hips. It's about three and a half inches wide. So it is quite wide and gives a lot of tummy support. These jeans have a straight leg. They have functional pockets on the front with a curve, the typical jean pocket that you would sew, but no coin pocket. And they have a fake fly front there. So you do some top stitching there. It looks like a fly, but there's no fly because they are put on. At the back, the leg is composed of two pieces. So there is a center back seam on the leg, patch pockets, there's a yoke, all those things. So, you know, if you're wearing your jeans with something that covers the waistband, they will look like you're wearing jeans. There's just no fuss with the fly front and zipper. You know what I mean? I know that is the aspect that puts a lot of people off making jeans, the zipper business. Well, there's none of that here, so it makes the process really short, very easy to sew actually. And when you are wearing these, it feels like you're wearing leggings. It really doesn't feel like you're wearing jeans. These jeans are not for denims that don't stretch. 
and actually it's quite specific in the amount that your denim needs to stretch 20 to 30 percent if you have a denim that stretches less than 20 you will have issues and they might not fit over the hips to get up to the waist and they will just feel really snug all over and then if you go past the 30 percent then you're gonna have really baggy jeans and it's not the ideal these need to fit snugly at the waist and the hips so stretch denim stretch cotton twill stretch corduroy your bottom weight stretch wovens that i wouldn't we really recommend they be too lightweight either they tend not to be too flattering if you make it out of too lightweight material you know you will like see the outline of your aunties and things like that so i would stick to the medium to heavyweight stretch wovens that have 20 to 30 percent stretch now i will show you in a second how to check that on fabrics that you might have i mentioned now that the size for this pattern comes in two separate drafts so you have the, the original version that had been available since release from double zero to 20. You can see the measurements here that, that draft caters for. And now the recent pattern that was re-released was retested. And this is from sizes 22 to 40. And it includes these measurements that you can see there. So you can see there is a wide range of body measurements that this pattern will work for. Now these are made with stretch material, they are snug, so there needs to be negative ease on the feet. If you look at the size chart, you will see about one inch of negative ease at the waist and three inches of negative ease at the hips. If you look at the body measurements chart and you choose your size based on your hip there, you have a number. If you scroll down below and see the finished measurements for that same size, you will see that the hip measures three inches smaller. But it doesn't mean it's not going to fit you, it means it's going to fit you amazing, it means it's going to be snug in all the right places. Believe me when I tell you that stretched denim jeans do not look good when they are baggy, they do not look good. <laughs> you know, so you need them to be nice and fitted and that's why they are made to be smaller than you because the stretch in the fabric will allow that. Now one thing to point about this waistband and about blending between sizes, it's very clearly there in the instructions, you know, if you have a very smaller waist in comparison to the hips, say more than two sizes different. Let's say the waist is 14 and the hips are 20, for example. It does say that you might need to use another material for the waistband that has more than 30% stretch because you won't be able to pull that smaller waistband over the hips if the difference is um, more than two sizes. So if you're making a waist 14 and you're making a hip of 18, you might still get away with it as long as your material that you're using has the appropriate stretch up to 30%. In my case, I saw a straight size. I don't need to blend between sizes. And the way that this one is blended is from the waistband. The waistband is quite wide. So on the top of the waistband, you would blend out to the bottom of that waistband or blend in, whatever the case. So that's the way that this is done, but it's very clearly explained in the instructions. Now I'll show you the pair I made in 2018. I have loved these. I have worn them. I have washed them. The denim is very good quality. I bought it here locally back then in a remnant bin. It was a little bit damaged. I found a hole <laughs> I had to patch up by hand. Um, but you know my plan back then was to just make them as per the pattern I had already been sewing each to stitch and testing for them already for a while and always had a good experience I think the block used um, by this brand sort of suits my body type and shape I have very good experiences repetitively so I had high hopes that this uh, first pair that I made was going to fit me I had I did absolutely no fitting adjustments now let's mention the let's sew easy pants series um, I have been running that on the channel for a long time and I have talked over and over about measuring yourself measuring the pattern those sorts of things but all those concepts apply for woven pants when you make pants with fabrics that don't stretch at all so you need to measure your body all those things but when you get into the realms of working with stretch woven or even then when you're making uh, pants that are made out of neat fabric, your body measurements are never going to match the pattern and they will have nothing to do with each other. This pattern has the front and the back rise finished measurements in the chart already. So you don't need to measure the pattern. 
it's including the waistband and everything and I did double check and they are exactly what the chat says there and they are shorter than me my front and my back rise are longer if I measure my body than what the pattern says there but when I saw these they fit me perfect so there's something about the negative ease it's always a mystery and that's why I've always said that sometimes sewing woven pants is easier because the fit is more absolute. It's unchangeable, you know what I mean? But when you start getting into stretch wovens, it can change from one fabric to another. You can make one pattern with a, with a stretch woven and then make the exact same pattern with a different type of stretch woven and the fit is going to be different because there's going to be differences in the amount of stretch. For pants like these I would suggest just getting some stretch denim that you don't like. Maybe you can find one that's cheaper in a color that you don't like and just make your muslin. I wouldn't waste time taking that many body measurements because they're not gonna translate onto these patterns and the way they're drafted with that negative ease. So you know blank slate no measurements and that's what i did in 2018 i got my size i chose my size 14 i just made them i didn't know i had to lengthen the legs that was a given so i did that and then when i had the jean on my body i made other little tweaks but just very minor tweak on the front crotch curve and i had an awesome result these are those love them wide waistband nice top stitching i put some cotton pocket bags in there they fly and in that opportunity i did top stitch that center back seam on the leg i love that and made simple pockets with the yoke waistband and look if you notice this waistband has a different color to that because i used two different denims <laughs> And even in here, one of these has a piece, I had to piece it together. You know, those things that I do, you know, and back then I had high hopes that they were gonna be wearable and that they were gonna fit me and they absolutely did. I think these are the type of unicorn jeans that will fit a lot of people from what I have seen in the Facebook group, Each to Stitch. Lots and lots of people seem to have excellent results with these, so, it's, it's really reassuring when you see that repetitively and you know I had such a good experience but then I see other people having that same great experience so it's it's really exciting when you find a pattern like that now back then I had a little bit less hip circumference one inch less I'm showing you here the fit that I showed last time I found at the time that the fit was astounding it was so good for me although when I wore them uh, a couple of hours during the day I found them a little bit baggy like I could have taken it in at the hips a little bit but otherwise the fit was really good they fit really well when I had a little bit of less hip volume there I was very happy with everything that center back seam didn't bother me and the yoke fit fine the pockets I was always very happy with everything now fast forward to today I still wear these jeans but they do fit tighter at the hips Yes, they do fit tighter at the hips. <laughs> so I do get a little bit of stress lines here across and I'm gonna show you how they fit now and based on that, what I planned, you know, to sew the second pair, I will show you next. So you've just seen a quick video of the fit I had on these originally when I made them. Same denim, they've been washed a couple times. I have gained an inch at the hips from that time. And I felt them a little loose last time, not loose, but when I would wear them, the denim would relax um, and then they'd end up a little bit baggy. So now they are really fitted. This denim does not have the appropriate stretch, so they feel really nice and fitted and firm on. But the fit is not that different. Still love them, still wear them. One thing that you see when you have pants that are too tight and it's very common on jeans, you see people in the street with this and they don't mind. <laughs> When it gets tight around the hips, when your jeans are fitting tighter than you would like, you see little whiskers forming here, like little stress lines just across there. I don't think it's that bad. I'm, it's very comfortable, I can still wear them. And they still fit nice and snug up here around the waist. And at the back, the only change I ever wanted to make was add maybe half an inch to the rise. Although they're fine, I do feel that when I sit, they do go down a tiny bit. But I wouldn't go and add a whole inch or anything, just half an inch. And I think that's what I'll do to the pair I'm going to make now. Other than that, I won't make any changes to the front or anything. 
I'll probably not top stitch the back seam and I will top stitch the in seams because these don't have that. I'll just switch that around a little bit. saw that they are still very wearable although they're a little bit snug at the hips and I'm gonna let you know why that is in a second <laughs> um, yeah let's let's just say that my denim does not stretch 20% it stretches like 15% but it was a denim I could find at the time they feel really snug they feel really supportive um, but you know it is not the recommended stretch and I would not recommend I think I can get away with having that fabric there because I saw a straight size so, you know, my waist and my hips are the same size, so I can sort of get away with shimmying myself in to that waistband through the hips. But don't do that, don't do that. Just get denim that stretches 20 to 30%. Anyway, based on what you saw there, you saw that I always knew I wanted to lengthen the back rise, just a tad, just half an inch. And now it's not that straightforward because there are two pieces to the back. So in Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you how to do that and how I measured my inseam, just tiny, tiny tweaks I did to this second pair. I'm gonna show you how to um, check your denim, the stretch. I'm gonna show you how these two fabrics stretch and the difference that they have. And other bits and bobs that are very practical as always, so let's hop into there. I like checking stretch against four inches of length so I use my cutting mat and I put my finger really really firm on the fabric there and then I stretch see how further from four it'll go so if it goes to five that means it stretches 25% if it goes to six it means it stretches 50 and so forth so for every inch it goes beyond the four it's an extra 25% stretch now my denim is supposed to stretch from 20 to 30 so you know if it stretches to almost 5 to just past 5 around this area then I'll be fine look this denim came hemmed I don't know how <laughs> but anyway I'll put the edge here the selvage on 4 inches and I'll just press it down really firm there and then stretch and see and look this one goes to 5 nicely it won't go further than five. So I would say this denim stretches 25%, which is good. They recommend 20 to 30%. So I think I'll be fine with this denim. Now I want to show you the stretch of the denim I made my other jeans with. I don't have a piece of fabric. I'm just gonna do it with a hem, see, it, see if it works. So I'll put the edge here on the four. I'll press this down there and see. Look, this one goes to 4.5. I mean, this stretches what? Not even 20%. I would say this is 15% stretch, the one I used for my other jeans. And I mean, that's why they feel really snug. They feel really firm. They feel nice. Um, but I wouldn't recommend. I mean, I got away with it. <laughs> but I think you should stick to the required uh, stretch. So I'm gonna show you the pattern itself. I didn't show it last time. Um, the back is composed of two pieces. There is a seam on the center back leg and I actually love that seam. If you do need to remove some excess around the thigh or something, you know, this seam could help you shape the jeans better to your body. In my case, I didn't really need to change the way the seam was. I sewed it and because I liked it, I top stitched it. But it is there and you could use it to fit your legs better if you needed it. There are three shorten and lengthen lines. There's one here on the top, so you can adjust the length of the crotch there. And that's the front one over there. This little extra bit here is what is gonna be the fake fly. Last time, the only adjustments I've made were to lengthen the legs. So there's a lengthen and shorten line there on the thigh. I added an inch there, so that's that, and that one there on both pieces. 
and then down lower on the leg you'll find another one and that's where I added two more and there two more now I know this because you know I always draw my seam lines and from there down to the mark of the hem I measured the original pattern I know what my inseam is with the hem already done and I know I needed three extra inches there so that's how I figured that out now last time the only adjustment I made to these curves here was to scoop in this front curve by about an eighth of an inch so the one that you see there is what I did and I remember to make the mark on the pattern so I wouldn't forget I can do it again this time and at the back I didn't modify anything now Looking at the pants and how they fit me, I think I could use with a little bit extra on the back and I'm going to use this line and add half an inch only. I'm not going to modify the front. So what I'm going to add here is going to be slashing into there up to the seam line and then opening it up. To do this, I have put some tape to make this piece one just in this area because I need to include both pieces to do this adjustment. So I'm just going to cut across there, up to there, not the edge of the paper, spread it open by just half an inch and fill in the gap with paper. I've made two lines so you can see what I've added there. Clean that line out there, cut this out. This is a very small amount, it won't deform the pattern that much. And now that I've got that, I can just, I can just cut this apart. Okay, so here you can see my two back pieces, the one in the center that has the curve, the one on the side that doesn't, and this little wedge slash situation involved the whole thing. Then I've separated it and then I can just sew it back together and it'll be fine. And that is the only fitting adjustment I'm going to make. These are the two pocket pieces. This is the pocket facing, the one that goes sewn on to the curve of the front leg. This is the one that goes on the back, that completes the hip area. And this is where you will sew that piece of denim, the main fabric on there, onto the woven fabric that you're using here. Now I want to transform this into one piece. Um, you know, this one you would do it normally inside you would have to sew this together around that curve there and it just creates an extra bulk and an extra seam there on the front of your pants you know if you just stick them together like that I just taped that together I put some paper behind that and just straightened out that and I'm just going to cut this out there and then I'll have one pocket piece to cut out of woven just one piece where I will sew that and then when I'm sewing this will just be fold it inside and there will just be a fold there instead of a seam. fabric I've chosen for this one is beautiful beautiful denim my husband had a work trip to Bolivia just before lockdown I'm kidding you not he got back on that weekend and on the Monday we were in lockdown <laughs> so he was at risk over there in Bolivia by going there um, but everything wasn't so like worldwide at the time and he went because he had to and then we just locked in here so he, over there, he goes to a market. When he goes, I hope he goes again someday, um, where they sell really nice denim. And he found a woman that sold denim that was already pre-treated. So it's not like the raw denim, the really dark navy denim that you can buy. This used to be way darker. I mean, this was almost black. And now it's looking nice and blue because of the washing. So eventually it will turn out lighter, but the original was dark, dark, dark. And when you wash them a few times and you sew, you get a bit of blue on your hands, you know. But this denim was already pre-treated. It's like the denim that you find in ready-to-wear jeans. So soft, so beautiful. I mean, I can't even. So he got me a few meters of those. I have enough left to make a skirt and I'm very happy about that. 
um, but this is the proper denim. I mean, this is so beautiful. It has the right stretch. When I put them on, it feels like I've got leggings on. Let's take it out of here. So same wide waistband. I've got the elastic inside the waistband. By the way, in the video I made previously, I showed all the sewing, like all the sewing techniques and the construction order. So that's why I'm not showing that here. But if you want to see how to sew these, go ahead and look at the previous video. You can see how the waistband is put together. I did it a little bit different. I didn't fold this under. I just left it like that, searched it. And then from the right side, I stitch in the ditch right there. And it's so neat and super less bulky. I mean, I avoid a layer of being folded right there. So it's, it feels nicer on like this. And inside, nothing special to see. <laughs> um, the difference I did with that, and I did mention that I wasn't planning on top stitching the back seam. I just left it there. I've got my patch pocket there that I never do any special designs to because I just... I just don't know what to do. I, I'm sure anything I tried that was pretty would turn out terrible, so I just do the basics. And we have pockets in there. Now you saw that I did want to transform the pocket bags into just one piece. And I have shown how to do that in a recent video I made about pants. I will link it down below if you want to see how that's done. It's the same concept. And you have that pocket yoke there that is sewn onto the pocket piece there. So you put your hand inside and I have the ugly side of my pocket fabric in there where no one's gonna see it. And when I turn these inside out, they are just beautiful. And you might recognize this fabric from a top I made recently, I had the scraps left. And it's such a nice soft fabric, cool on the skin. It was just perfect to make the pockets inside. So I have tropical pockets inside and have the right side of the fabric showing there. Now, another video that shows you how to sew jean pockets from each to stitch as well. And that's where I showed in detail how I achieve this nice fabric inside rather than the other way. And it shows everything about how to sew jean pockets. It's the same as this. The only difference is that I've transformed the two pieces into one and I have a fold in there instead. So it's just one seam less on the leg, less bulk on the front. Same curve there, just pretend there's a seam there, but, th but there isn't, you know? <laughs> so those are very nice, they turned out super pretty. And here you can see the excess fabric that folds there for the fake fly, that is top stitched on the right side. And it looks really nice, I mean, it looks like you actually have a fly there. Fake fly, love doing that. Now in the instructions, there's a little diagram showing you how you can slim down the legs if you want to have a slimmer leg. These are straight legs, and back then I did make mine narrower. I took in from the bottom um, three eighths of an inch on the side, up, up, up to the knee area. I've never actually been a fan of skinny jeans or like jeans that go tight, tight, tight all the way to the ankle. I'm not a fan. <laughs> so I like them a little bit less than the straight leg, but not super tight on the leg either. These are my newest pair of jeans, same size as the one before. Only change was to add half an inch of length at the back rise, otherwise the same size stretchier denim, the correct type of stretch denim, so I can feel the difference in the way it fits. It's still snug, but there's more elastane in there and it's much more comfortable. Love them. I did slim the leg down the same amount I did last time, just 3 eighths of an inch from the hem up to the knee sort of thing. And I love this tone of blue, feel really good in these. Here you can see the blue is like a nice rich blue. I love this tone of blue. I know it'll get lighter with washing. There's the top stitching of the pocket right there. I've got nice lining fabric inside. Super nice and comfy. These pockets aren't the biggest ones, but they're not the smallest. Like my hand gets down to there, so that's okay. You can see the top stitching on the fake fly. Waistband starts there and goes right up to my belly button. That's where I like it to be. Um, the waistband has an elastic on the top, so it's nice and snug. It's not going to fall. It's nicely shaped and just gives lots of support around here. This time I didn't top stitch the center back seam of the leg. I just sewed it normal. There you can see the yoke, patch pockets. I'm not the most creative with designs on patch pockets, so there you go. They do cup the bottom 
and it actually feels like I'm wearing leggings. If I ever fly again on an airplane, these are the ones I will wear, I am sure of that. They are so comfortable. And even though they are the same pattern with minor difference between this one and this one, they are the same. You can see the difference in the fit, how tight these look and how normal these look being the same size. I didn't go up a size, even though I increased an inch around my hips, I just made the same size anyway because I knew if these looked really tight, these were gonna look fine because the fabric was stretchier. So, stretchy fabric and minimal stretchy fabric. These still worked, I mean, I can still wear them, but they do feel tight, you know? So if you have the choice to get a really nice denim, just look for the right type. Um, don't do what I did and make them out of denim that stretches less because they might be really uncomfortable for you uh, especially if you have a smaller waist size than the hip size then yeah it would be really terrible to get on and like try to push them over the hips you know if you want to give these a go I fully recommend them they will be a good experience for you I promise you uh, take a break from taking that many measurements on yourself. Just make a muslin. You don't need to do all the top stitching and things like that. Um, choose a stretch fabric that is sort of the same as the one you're going to wear. And go from there. See how it fits on your body. And see if you need to add or take away from the rise. That sort of thing, that sort of thing is more intuitive rather than so mathematical like it is when you're making woven pants. Different approach for different styles of pants. They are all very fun to do. I fully recommend this one. And if you want to try it, you can always use my affiliate link that is down below and that also helps support me. Thank you so much for watching. I promise you this is the end of the pant phase. No, I will keep making pants, but the content on the channel will be more varied in the next week, not pants. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.